hello hello making a video as I am healing my bronchitis with everything that I can possibly find on my healing quest on my path to holistic healing and it is a rocky road and I want to use this video in contemplation and I want to talk about these all these things I'm looking out the window all the way to the horizon and I can see very far away mountains and the ocean and it's very healing and I see into the trees and all these pine trees and it's very healing and I bought myself different pine needle oils for my bronchitis and peppermint oil and buddha wood oil and many other different oils and white lotus essential absolute and that makes me feel a little bit better i had i had a very very rough last two weeks it's been a very 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 rough ride I had a very severe nervous breakdown and when that happens I can't think clearly anymore I I have paranoia I feel like people are talking behind my back about me I feel like I project into people I don't know whether that's true I still not not sure you know whether they do or not but that's kind of secondary actually even if other people talk ab about our you know personality and all of this then whether they do or whether then they they're not doing it you know, most most people would never say something like yeah I talk bad about you you know they wouldn't say this because they would want to protect you from that information even if it was true you know so and it doesn't it really doesn't matter you know when someone talks bad about someone else they that is their own life and their own th thoughts their own problems it really shouldn't be the other person's problem but it becomes my problem the moment I am not clear in my head anymore. The moment I am getting paranoid, the moment my ego reacts to just the thought, not even reality. So I got myself some what is this called? Noise Putty Mastic Sonore. <laughs> Press your finger into the putty and air will escape up the sides, creating comical sounds, I guess farting sounds. I, I bought this uh, kind of like as some kind of some kind of homage to my bronchitis and I was going to make a prank video about this but then I decided not to it's better not to because oh this is awesome oh, 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 oh. oh here that smells like slime Hey, I know that smell. I had, I had a lot of slime in the past. This is slime. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, this is slime. This is the, this is the classic slime, and it glows. That's awesome. Okay, so it's a little lazier. It's a little lazier than the slime I had. 
in the past. So time height in the past was quicker. It would flow quicker. This is a little slow dripping. And that is nice. I like it. But it smells exactly like the slime I had in the past. So anyway, I thought this is some kind of like... They had different colors, but I, cho I chose this one because of my bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should not laugh because if I laugh then this kind of stuff will come out of my lungs. I better not. <laughs> <coughs> there it goes. But it's getting better. It's getting a lot better. My lungs feel better. The other day I actually had to take a, an extra strength aspirin. And that is that, that's extreme. I mean I really have to suffer before I resort to pain medicine, even aspirin. I really, it really has to get bad. And I even went to the doctor. And for me to go to a doctor, that takes an awful lot of suffering first. That takes whole nights without sleep. And that takes coughing nonstop all night long and keeping my family awake. It takes quite something before I say, okay, all right, I get it. I'm going to the doctor now. So that's what I did. I went to the doctor. And the most amazing thing happened. The most amazing thing happened. Let's see if this does some, some toad. This is a... Oh. Reminds me a little bit of a frog. There it is. Yeah, it has aquatic sounds. It's much nicer than, than farting. That's not farting. It's more like a pond. <laughs> Pond sounds. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Love it. Very happy with this. Very happy. This is a nice video making thing. So, I can't make penises with this. So that's an extra. <laughs> that is a. That is an extra plus. Because, you know, when I review my video, it's like I'm constantly, <laughs> I'm constantly holding a penis in my hand. It's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing. A penis of all kinds of different colors. <laughs> I know why that's happening, because I've been on Facebook for, for so many years. And, and I also believe that. It's Facebook that, yeah, as funny as that sounds, but you know, it's not funny at all. I mean, it can really get to you after a while, but particularly if you're honest and if you want an honest, kind, giving, nice conversation, you know, but the other person has only some self aggrandization in mind. You know whatever of whatever sort and it doesn't feel very good it doesn't feel good it feels like I can talk until I'm blue in the face it doesn't doesn't matter I'm people don't hear ah there 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 was one there was a good one so anyway I went to the doctor and something amazing happened. The first thing is, you know, and I, it's because I went in there without any agenda at all. 
you know it took me a while I had to wait for several days before my inner you know the clinging and and the the Ernie effect as I call it you know like Ernie there was this very very nice Sesame Street where where Ernie borrowed a vacuum cleaner from Mr. Hoover. Yeah, Hoover was one of the first vacuum cleaner companies. And Mr. Hoover, he looked very interesting with a mustache and a cylinder hat, I think. And Ernie says, oh, Mr. Hoover, we need a, I need a vacuum cleaner. Oh yeah, he hasn't even borrowed the vacuum cleaner yet. And uh, he already assumed that he was going to be going on the nerves of Dr. Mr. Hoover. <laughs> I already say Dr. Hoover. So Mr. Hoover had just a friendly facial expression, but Ernie got, he rolled himself deeper and deeper into this this projection that he was going on the nerves of Mr. Hoover. So, and that, that is something my mother and my brother recognized that immediately when we were children even, that this is what I'm doing. This is, this is kind of like, this is written into my DNA. So, so, so as he was making excuses after excuses on why he needed to borrow the vacuum cleaner, <clears throat> Mr. Over hasn't even said anything yet. Ernie was starting to get mad because he was assuming he was going on the nerves of Mr. Hoover. So he finally ended up saying, you know, I don't even want your lousy vacuum cleaner. You can, you can stick it on your hat. And he walked away. And so this became our famous Ernie effect, a situation that hits very close to home. And this is something you know that that very paranoid people and people very, with very low self esteem have, and that is me. I have a very very low self esteem, just because I make videos and I and I just I just I get sort of I sort of sh shed this inhibition of making videos. Because the making of video weighs more than my shyness and my awkwardness. So I figure, you know, if someone doesn't want to see an awkward video, they don't have to, right? So I'm not imposing anything because of this. I'm always approaching things in a way of, I am imposing something. I'm imposing, you know, I, couldn't, I can't impose on anything. On anyone you know they I'll be going on their nerves you know? I would never borrow a vacuum cleaner or water from someone or ask someone to help me because I feel like I'm, I'm imposing on someone but this is a form of mental illness and that goes very far that goes so far it goes into every single niche in life you know? It goes so far that I, I can't even make myself look pretty because I feel like I'm imposing on I'm imposing on society or something or I am I'm obviously stupid or I'm obviously this or that or I, people I I already hear people talk in my head say oh, now she's trying to look pretty you know it's this kind of thing that's happening this is that's borderline man that's borderline massive depressive that's what that is this is worse than the, the than what other people have even. borderline massive depressive and yeah that is my life that's the life i have to live with i constantly feel like i people find me yucky and gross and Feel like I'm I'm imposing you know I can't even go shopping because I feel like my looks is gonna be my looks are so offensive and so when I go shopping you know it's not like 
Yeah, I can't tell people, hey, you can watch a different video. You can go to someone else's video. I can't do that when I go shopping. When I go shopping, it's like, here I am, Nicola. I'm, I exist too. And I am going shopping, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you can stick the vacuum cleaner on your head before other people even said anything. Before anyone ever even said anything. This is going on in my head. It's not funny at all. Not at all. Not at all. I try to try to wrap this into a bit more sunshine with this sunshine here. But lung mucus sunshine to to be correct. But it's still it's still not funny. It is not funny at all. It's not funny to have mental illness, whatever you want to call it, a hyper reaction, in, 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 an inflamed brain, a reaction to trauma, you know, PTSD. That's, that's what my physician that I went to yesterday, it's what she said. She just plain and simply called it PTSD. I said, I agree. That's what it is. I was, it was amazing. Yesterday it was really amazing because I expected the worst and I came out with the, with the best. And I am infinitely grateful for this because I gave up these, you know, when I went there, I went there with a determined will to go in there without, with a blank slate, without a pre-conceptual idea of how these people are going to be reacting to me. Okay, I'm, I went there as a tabula rasa, as, as a sick woman with bronchitis who doesn't want anything from anyone, who just wants to get tested, that's all. So, and because I did this and because I was friendly and I had a good attitude, there were First of all, the most amazing people that I en encountered, which is also, which is this, an amazing thing that happens. It's like when I'm in a bad mood, I there will be guaranteed someone, not just someone reacting to my bad mood, but there will be someone who already who has that same <laughs> mood himself or herself, who is just as paranoid or who is uh, even ruder than I am. So it's a, it's a strange thing that happens sometimes with the law of attraction. And I know I've experienced this so many times now. I wished for a pleasant experience and I went in there without the, I, I, then I, have, I wished for it, but I let go of the expectation. I wished for it and then you have to let go of it. You have to just, you know, I have to lean into a fatalistic sort of mind state. And then you go in, you treat people as equals, and they will treat you as an equal back. And that's how the law of attraction works. It is very interesting. So the first thing is I go to that, to that receptionist window. And there sits this, I have this, this is the most amazing thing. There, that was this here, not me. There sits this amazing guy, 25 years old, huge, muscular, super buff, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie star looks. Uh, first of all, what, what's that guy doing there? What, why is he working there in that clinic as a receptionist? I don't understand. The, I must be in the outer limits or something. And uh, or twilight zone, and then he was also super sweet and friendly to me. I was real awkward. I started to think, oh, I'm old. He's probably gonna be annoyed by me. And no, he wasn't. He was very friendly and sweet. He, uh, the sweetest guy, making a video. <coughs> And it's very annoying, the coughing. I apologize for that. 
particularly in between uh, visuals and trying to speak softly. So it doesn't it doesn't always work with the soft speaking. But I try. I give I give my I give my attention to it. So anyway, the guy was super nice. Then he gave me this doctor and never heard that name before. So I went in there and so first of all, I didn't even have to wait for 10 minutes. Then the the assistant was super nice. And she weighed me 217 pounds with shoes and clothes. I took my backpack off first, but shoes and with shoes and clothes. <coughs> I guess you can deduct a pound or two. So it brings it down to around 215 pounds. And I was like, wow, I didn't know I was still that heavy. So because I am losing weight now that I had from I'm I am doing it for my heart. I am. I, I, there's absolutely no way I'm going to let anyone, anyone persuade me to eat junk, even if they hold it under my nose directly. And that happens here in this household. And that's why I, I fell back so many times and felt bad about it and everything. And, and it, just felt, felt un, it felt very unethical and felt unhealthy and whole. It's just, it's a, something that that feels good, isn't good for you, isn't good for others, and doesn't serve the greater God. That's what junk food is. That is according to Tony Robbins, the class three experience. And this is what almost all people experience. So, yeah, because it's like, it's, it's, it's the quick fix, you know, without thinking like, it's almost like a knee-jerk reaction. Oh boy, I better grab this now and eat it. And then I changed my body chemistry by eating this or whatever. So, yeah, but but it is detrimental on, in the long run. And I can feel it. My heart is definitely suffering. My liver, my kidneys, all of it. It has absolutely no sense to continue this. So for me, it's just clear. It's a, it's like a matter of life and death. So I, I have no choice. It's like you get to the point at some point, even if you had many relapses, at some point you get to the point when you suffer so much physically, also psychologically. You suffer so much that there's just absolutely no more return. There is no more option. It's just the little bit of pleasure from the chocolate for the five minutes or so it's a it's a pleasure indulgence that it's just the price you pay for that with your health with your sanity i mean <clears throat> besides that it's expensive and and the suffering in the world you know that's a that's a worst part of all the suffering that these that chocolate production causes. It's a dairy product. It's dairy industry causes infinite of suffering. Separation of mother and calf and and isolation of baby cows. And I mean it's like exploitation of animals and people and with the cocoa being production and all that what well, that is involved in this sugar white sugar the production of that and white sugar is toxic it's toxic for our bodies i just read um today that regular salt is also toxic refined sugar and refined salt is toxic sea salt even is toxic because you know the, the oceans are being polluted so the only salt that is healthy for us is pink Tibetan salt, salt crystals. Himalayan pink salt. That's the only salt that is good for us. 
and also only in small amounts, very small amounts, trace amounts. Yeah. Everything is already way oversalted by itself. You don't even you don't need to add any more to it. The vegetables already have there's nitrates in the ground, which is salt. Very, very it's not good at all. So I want to stay away from that. All food means no more processed foods at all. Some people go vegan and then they quit because it didn't work. You know why it didn't work? Because they ate junk food. That's why it didn't work. There, there's vegan junk food. You have to eat vegan whole food. Whole food is, the, is really is the key. And vegan for ethical reasons. Also for our hearts. So very, very important that I, that I mentioned this. Very, very important. So anyway, the, the assistant was very, very nice too. And she asked me all these questions also in regards to uh, psychiatric evaluation. I just went ahead and answered all of them honestly. <laughs> as if I'd taken an honest medication. Yeah, there are... There are substances that make people say things honestly. They didn't give that to me, but that's kind of how I felt. I felt like, whatever. I'm just going to answer it completely honestly. Call the kid by the name and everything. Maybe too honestly. A little bit. You know, for most people's tastes. So... Yeah, but I said it the way it is, you know. It is the way it is. I have paranoia. I have massive depression. I tried everything holistic one can imagine. So that brings me to the point where I just I kind of surrender to it and I say, okay, so obviously I had this in mind of fixing myself you know this a fixed idea on fixing myself that doesn't work that 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 attitude is that's a resistance vibration in the infinite cosmos i can't even receive that what i wish for when i am fixated on that outcome whatever outcome it is it won't happen as long as I am fixated on it. So I have to give up on that. Okay? And the thought is, okay, <laughs> this is it. I'm going to live like this for the rest of my life. I have these conditions. And let's just try to make the best out of it. So that's basically the conclusion I have come to. <laughs> and it's okay. So, And then the doctor came in and I was absolutely amazed. <coughs> the doctor, a beautiful woman, like in her early 60s, like a mix between Callista Flockhart, the actor, actress, actor, and uh, like, uh, yeah, like Cher, Cher Bono. And she had like really, really long, really small, curly hair, fully white, completely white, with glasses, thick eyebrows, which I like. <coughs> She's partly Hungarian. And I don't know, mix of different things. And... Um, Maybe partly Spanish or something. So I don't know. Very, very looked reminded me of Cher Bono and Callista Flocker. Yes. Very sweet woman. And it was amazing. I was absolutely amazed, you know, how she approached me with this open mind and with this kindness. And I told her that I suffer from the world falling apart. I suffer from the suffering in the world. 
It makes me suffer. And she said, she does too. And she said, she's a vegan. And I was like, what? I can't, I mean, I was just, I was so delighted about that. To find a vegan, to find such a, such a sweet woman in this, in this very Republican dominated area here. That was quite a find. That was cool. That's law of attraction, bringing me an angel in the midst of this, of this, of these hunting pesticide spraying people. So, my appeal to the world is please don't hunt anymore, don't kill, don't hurt anymore, don't hurt any living being. Don't hurt your animals. Don't don't be enraged about any living being. They don't know better. Don't hurt anyone. And don't spray any pesticides anymore. We need the frogs. We need the frogs out there making these lovely sounds, these aquatic sounds. I love it. I love hearing frogs. For me, the sound of frogs is the sound of health. This is the sound of environmental health. It's the sound of energy and vi vital, ener energetic life force out there. Don't hurt that, people. Don't hurt any living being. you have any kind of problems with any kind of with mosquitoes or whatever first of all the, the frogs they eat the mosquitoes they are so important the dragonflies they are so important they eat the mosquitoes there are so many wonderful animals that keep our ecosystem in balance don't hurt any of them don't hurt ants, you don't spray ant poisons or roach motels or any of these things. It's not necessary. Not necessary to pollute our watersheds, our our precious planet. It's not necessary to do this. Okay, there are alternative methods out there. Very important. Just because I have depression and stuff like this doesn't mean that what I have to say is uh, somehow bull or or fabricated but no it's not it's very real what i'm saying because 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 i suffer i i have all these problems because i suffer from society i suffer from the pollution from seeing suffering that's what causes it That means that means people who who suffer from the suffering in the world they care don't hate these people they don't hate caring people and don't tell them are you better than anyone else no they never said that people who care they care that's they're concerned they want to they they don't want to see suffering in the world And they deserve, they deserve to be listened to. Just because they wear the wrong clothes or, or are not religious like most people are or are not adapted to society, to all these weird different norms, and normations and, and political correctnesses doesn't mean that they don't have anything to say, quite the contrary. It is the outsiders who have something to say to the world, to everyone, and they need to be listened to. This is a lovely material. 
Yeah, what's the flag? Frog. I love frogs, always love frogs. When I was a child, I would pick them up and kiss them on the mouth. <coughs> because I read in fairy tale books that one should do that. And they would become beautiful princes to take us to their castles. But that never happened. <laughs> I also believe that I kissed the female toads on the mouth. I didn't know what gender they were. <laughs> and they were like, they were just like this. They didn't move at all. They just sat like this. With the arms hanging over over the side. Like, like this. They were pregnant, I think. And I picked them up and I was like, oh, interesting, nice, a tame toad. And then I kissed the, the toad on the mouth, Mwah. and the toad didn't do anything. It was just like, uh, whatever. <laughs> and I gently put it back where I found the beautiful, beautiful being. A beautiful female. I love you, all of you. Beautiful. <coughs> female and male. Frogs. And tadpoles. Beautiful beings. I love these real large frogs. I think they're called bullfrogs. Very large and lovely. I would like to have a bullfrog, tadpole, they're like this big. I, I saw them in this area and I saw them in also in Bishop, California in a pond. I went diving in there in that pond and I, I was diving down all the way down with my goggles on and I was observing the bullfrog tadpoles. They were they were sitting on the ground of the pond. Of the pond, and they, they looked like comic book figures. It was amazing with these stick eyes that would come out, that bulge out. Very sweet, and they were looking at me. They weren't even moving away. They were just looking at me with these, these protruding eyes that were coming out like this. Amazing. I would like to have one and put him in our little pond that we have there for Papa Dog. That'd be nice. I would love to have a real pond, not just a plastic pool, kiddie pool, but a real pond I would like to have and a large one maybe a runoff from the from a hot water pool where it runs off and becomes cooled down and it's what but still warm like 80 degrees or something it could be perfect very perfect for those bullfrogs and they make real large loud sounds like, like a bear, like, mmm, very, very, very deep sounds, amazing. First time I heard those sounds was 
in the Santa Monica Mountains when we went hiking with our dogs. And I thought those were bears, and I got real, real, real scared. And then Paul and his friend were listening, and they said, no, those are not bears, those are frogs. And it was the first time I've ever heard them because where I come from, there are, they, they don't live there. They, that's too cold for them. We have much smaller frogs and toads. And the frogs and toads we have, they, they are adapted to, uh, to an ice cold winter. And what they have, they have antifreeze in their bodies and when it gets gets cold, they freeze, but without damaging the cells because of the antifreeze. Kind of like what they use with the dead bodies in the cryo tanks. You can have your body preserved in a cryo tank. A lot of people are signed up for this already. <coughs> I am not interested being preserved in a cryo tank. I'm not, I don't put that much weight on my existence at all. I'm glad once this is all over, all of this. Really glad. In the meantime, I try to make the best out of it, the best I can with what I have, with the situation, with the brain I have, the sensitivity. I just have to know where my limits are. I have to know what I can do and what I can't. And then within this range, I have to just try to enjoy as much as I can. We all should allow ourselves to enjoy as much as we can and to do things holistically and in a meaningful way, not waste things, not waste anything, but become inventive, become resourceful, become creative, make art, make amazing things, constantly be thinking about how to improve things in your own lives, in your own household, and beyond. Because we're all in this together. We're not separated. I'm not split away from the other living beings around me. People take things for granted a lot. They take the trees for granted. The trees and the ocean and the, the forests and the ocean are supplying us with oxygen. Without, the, without them, without the health of forests and an ocean, we could not survive. The oxygen level is already, is already dwindling down. Because of deforestation, worldwide <clears throat> and overfishing and ocean noise and pollution. Flora and fauna is changing because of pollution, because of commerce, exploitation and so on. <coughs> That's a fact. Right? And I, as long as I live, I do what I can, whatever I can, to help, whatever I know, I, I get informed. I'm not going to pull the wool over my eyes. I get informed and I make better choices, living choices. And... That's the most important thing that we can do in our lives. It's very important to live responsibly. <clears throat> and that brings me to the subject 
that I've been wanting to talk about for the last couple of days. I've been thinking and thinking about this. That <coughs> I observe people on the internet and also in person, you know, and when I sit in the van, we always take turns shopping and I sit there and I observe people. And what I see is that most people are addicts of some sort. They are all food addicts, almost all of them, almost all, without exception. Most of them are alcoholics, and most of them are cigarette smokers. And many of them are on some kind of drug also. And most of them are on some kind of pharmaceutical drug. And I would say more than 50% are on Vicodin or other painkilling pharmaceutical drugs that are prescribed like without any uh, without any responsibility at all. Some people I know in person are I'm not friends with them because it is impossible for me to be friends with those people. They would, they would never listen to what I have to say. When I came to the clinic yesterday, for example, they asked me what medications. They didn't ask me, are you on medication? They asked me, what medications are you on? As if it's the most natural thing that I'm going to be on medication. I said I don't take any medications of any sort. And that was the most bizarre thing for them to hear, actually. Because how can you live without medication, right? How can you exist in this chaos without, med without self-medicating or without having a doctor medicate you? and numb you. So I realize that that's another huge factor why I don't have friends, why I don't get along with any, most people. Because I can't be friends with someone who is on substances. They don't even hear what I have to say. They don't even feel me. They don't even see me. And if they see me, they, they, they will probably only see me through this here. They see only fragments or an outline of that what I am. They see me through, through a veil, through a distorting glasses or something. Distorting glasses of their substances. They don't see me or hear me in its clear, sharp, sharpness of vision or sound. They see me through their uh, oblivious goggles, with pink flowers painted on it. How can they see me? How can they hear what I have to say? So, and I believe if you took that away, if, if there were a famine or some kind of anarchy breaking out worldwide, and people wouldn't have their supply of mind-numbing substances anymore, whatever that is, uh, all hell would break loose because people would become so cranky and so irritated and they'll flood it with emotional pain and stuff. So I have to say in that sense, I have made huge, huge progress. Mm -hmm. I have really made huge progress. And there are plants that you can take that, that don't numb you. I mean, uh, that don't distort your vision, that numb the pain, but not 
the sharpness of your mind, like salai, which we have in our garden, which I take sometimes, also for emotional thing. And it doesn't affect my brain in any way, does it? Take away from the clarity of mind. And there's a plant in the Amazon rainforest called Kratom. And I heard people rant and rave about it. And promptly the drug mafia and the pharmaceutical industry working in cahoots have destroyed wide areas of the, the wild growing Kratom plants. Because the Kratom is free and it's working better than their drug supply. And it's a competition for them. So they destroy it. And they're not held accountable. They're not put in prison. The UN isn't stepping in doing anything about it. What is that UN doing? What is the purpose of the United Nations? What is the purpose of the Interpolis? What's the purpose of any of these titles and institutions if they do nothing to protect this planet or to protect, protect us, all of us, in, in, a, in a network of environmental safety and, and interdependence? If they don't protect that, that web of life, then what can what what are they good for? They're not good for anything. And neither is the Club of Rome, and neither is the Rotary Club. They're not good for anything. What they I know this per, from personal experience. So I've known people in from those groups. What they do is they do they do some spoiled kit type of things. You know, some of this is fun, some of this has to do with art, it's great, modern art, wonderful. But they want to hear nothing, nothing about making the world a better place, about saving our resources. Want to hear nothing about it. 